Today I'm gonna to show you how to get your SwitchBot motion sensor set up and there's some tricks with this device that I'm going to give you with some of the other systems that this integrates with. Now, you'll notice on the back of the packaging, they're telling you that you could do a lot of things with motion sensors and, and their curtains and their bots, but I'm gonna show you even more today. So let's get this opened. And what I'll tell you is that you are going to require a hub mini. And I'll show you that in a second here. But we have a couple of cards and a user manual. This card you'll wanna have a look at because there is the support website if you do struggle at all here. That's on the back of that card. Now, you get some 3M strips for the mount. And I'll show you the mount here in a second. So here's the mount and it's substantial. Like you could stick this a lot of places. You can actually screw it in and there is a little lock and unlock capability. So now it's unlocked and I can take this out. There we go. And then I could actually screw that into a wall or another location. There, now I've locked my mount. And the other thing about this mount is that you can actually move it around quite a bit. Now, I would suggest that you leave it centered as much as you can because you're gonna have to push it pretty hard into the sensor. Now, the kit also comes with a couple of AAA batteries, so that's what you'd have to replace in a few years time when this motion sensor dies. And here is the motion sensor. So it's a reasonably large motion sensor. It has a little light on the front that will illuminate, but you can choose that. This is your button to get it paired right here. And you also have a couple of mounting locations. So here's the mount on the back and you're gonna have to push it in there. And then here's the mount on the bottom. So both of these you can just push into and see, like I said, it starts to move. So you gotta kinda watch that or you could smack around things. But now you have it and you can move it around, spin it as much as you'd like. The other thing that you will need is to open the back compartment. Now it's pretty simple. Down at the bottom there, there's a little lip and you can pull that out. So let me get my two AAA batteries in there and then we'll get rolling. All right. now. There are, of course, the plus and minus that you have to look at here inside the compartment. A little hard for me to show you, but you're gonna reverse those two, and then you're gonna close this up, and now your sensor is ready to be paired with a Hub Mini. Now, the thing is, I already have a Hub Mini set up, and if you don't have your Hub Mini set up, then you've got to do that first. That's required for this device and the contact sensor to work in all cases. This is a little bit different than SwitchBot's other products. Now, the Hub Mini, I would have it relatively close. You don't have to have it this close or anything, but I wouldn't be a couple of floors away when you're trying to set up this device. Okay, I have my SwitchBot application open and you can see there's a lot of different devices that I already have, but we're gonna hit the plus up at the top and you should notice right away that it has found my motion sensor and any other Bluetooth devices within range. But the motion sensor, they're gonna give you specific instructions here. Long press the button on the top until it starts flashing. And then hit next. So I'm gonna call this SwitchBot Motion 2 because I already have one in there. And then I'm gonna hit the save button. And you have to select the hub that you are going to pair this with. So if you did have multiple, you would want to select the one that's going to be closest to this device. And you just have to tap on it. And now it's communicating between the hub and this device. Now you can see it instantly connected to my Miss A system. And that's very important. That's one of the integrations. I'll show you though, if you didn't get that to happen, what you got to do here today. So I'm gonna hit next and there's a difference if you have a pet in your home. So this is a little bit of a different scenario here. You're going to want to install it to a spot higher than your pet. Now just higher than your pet. So I'll show you when you hit no on this question what happens. So first of all, they want you to make sure that you get this button 
sitting on the top of the sensor. However you're going to install it, that is on the top. They are telling you that it matters what orientation you put it in. So that reset button's got to be there. You can see that they're telling you to get it stuck to whatever surface you'd like using those 3M stickers. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I think you can do it. And then what we get is the ability to adjust the sensitivity. And as you hit each one of these, the distance will adjust and it will tell you right here if it sees you moving around. So you can see it back here triggering and as I'm moving, it's saying within detection range. As you adjust these, then you might find, okay, it's not sensitive enough. What do I got to do here? Now, what I found with this sensor is it takes quite a bit of movement to actually see you. So I'm going to move around quite a bit and you can see that it did detect me, but it took that much movement. It's not detecting me when I'm just doing this. So sometimes it will, but in general, it's going to require you to actually physically move around your home. Now I'm gonna set this to a medium sensitivity and then I'm gonna hit next. So we're all done with the basic setup, but there's a lot more here. Number one, this little symbol means that you need to do an update. Now when you go in, you're going to see whether or not motion is detected and there's the ambient brightness. Now, right now it's saying that it's dim in the room, but you actually have to do a calibration of this because it's not dim in this room. Now, automation, this is where you can go ahead and start to create those conditions and then the actions that you'd like to execute. So this is where you can create those things that we saw in the back of the box really quickly, the motion sensor with the curtain, and here you can see I have my motion sensors and I have one of those contact sensors already installed. So if motion is detected or there's no motion for a time, you might want to take an action. Now, you can also adjust whether or not you want the ambient brightness to be a condition. So you can see right here, it says motion detected and dim right now. I'm choosing that scenario. Then I can hit save and now we can add our different actions. So if motion was detected and it's dim, I probably want to turn on the lights. Now I actually have a light right now. It's this one. So this would turn on the lights if there's motion and the, it is dim in the room and then that would give me my lighting. You can also set a period of time which means you can adjust which days it's executing on if that was something for you and the start and end times that you wanted that to happen. Then you can test the uh, execution of this, what it will actually do, and notify you when the actions are executed. You can turn that on and off. So I'm not going to save that one. I don't actually want to do that one, but we have some other settings to walk through here. The first thing you'll want to do in these settings is to get the device updated. Now, this is again where it's really important that that sensor is close to your hub. You want to hit that firmware update and you don't want to be touching anything right now. All right, so I'm updated. I didn't move from this page and you also see that battery level sitting there. Now you can get some other device information and there's a little locator here. So that's it. You see it just flashing there. This is all you're getting. It's just going to sit there and flash and that would basically let you know if you had multiple in the same room. Now, notifications is something that's probably pretty important to a lot of you. Do you want notifications if anything is going on? You can just choose motion detected right now. Um, and so you've got to make that decision just for this one entirely there. Now, do you want the indicator light? This is whenever it detects motion. So it's not at all times, but do you want it to indicate that it's seen that. Here's the motion sensitivity. We can go and adjust this again and it doesn't matter which system this is connected to. It's going to use that motion sensitivity setting and that's how you'll get your triggers. The light sensor, what has to happen here is you calibrate the light sensor 
where it's going to be placed. So I'm not going to do this right now because this is not where this is going. What you're gonna do is hit next and then they want you to make your room dim and this is going to calibrate it so it knows, okay, it's dim in the room. So turn off the lights, close your curtains, block the light sources and then hit calibrate. And once you go through that, those automations that are based on the light sensor will work. Next up is the cloud service. So this is how that Miss A notification showed up at the top of my screen right when I installed this device. Now, whether or not you want it connected to the cloud service is right here. If you hit that radio button, this device gets disconnected from all of these services or all of the services that you've connected. Now, I'm going to hit this and this allows you to get the skill set up for Miss A, okay? So this is the way that you can start your integration with any of these different services. In order to execute scenes though, you have to turn on this setting. That's a really important component for a lot of people. Now, one thing that they're not showing that they have integration with is Samsung smart things. So this is important to keep in mind that you can actually do that, but it's not showing up here. The Google Home application unfortunately doesn't allow you to do anything with the motion sensor from SwitchBot at the moment, and neither does if this then that, although if this then that should change in the near future. So really your only two choices at the time of this video's release is SmartThings and Amazon for integrations or inside of the SwitchBot app. What you have to do with these devices, if you have an integrated SwitchBot in your SmartThings smart home, well, then you're gonna hit the plus up at the top on the front page, hit device, and then you can go by brand, that's probably the easiest thing to do and even just search for it. Now, once you hit that, then you're gonna hit other, and now you're going to choose that. Now you'll choose the location for the new devices you are adding in here. So this one's actually going to go at my garage entry. I've chosen the, the home location if you happen to have multiple homes, and then I'm going to hit next. So what you'll notice is now a second sensor has been connected to Miss A, and this is the one that's actually coming through SmartThings, because here it is on the bottom of my list. So I'm going to hit done, and then we can go find that device. So we'll go to our garage entry here, and there's my SwitchBot Motion 2. All right. So here we are at my garage entry where I'm going to place the sensor and you can see that the SwitchBot motion sensor is sitting here. Now when I go into it, all I'm getting is the battery percentage and a motion detected. Now when I swipe down, I'm actually refreshing the status of the sensor and unfortunately for the SwitchBot motion sensor right now with Samsung SmartThings, that's all that's going to happen for you. It's the only way to get this status to update. That's very, very disappointing, and it's gotta be something that SwitchBot's gotta fix. But while it is not fixed, we can head into automations, and what I've done is I've created a couple of automations that are very simple. But the first thing I had to do in order to create those automations was to create a virtual device. Now I have the virtual device creator down here uh, in my list of smart apps. You might have SmartThings Labs, which will be sitting here in your country. So I went to the menu tab or the more tab and now it'll be sitting here for you and then you'll find the ability to create a virtual switch. But for myself, I have to create them here. Now I'm going to create a new one because I had already set up a previous motion detector. So we're gonna call this uh, switch motion two. And then I'm going to hit the done button. So what I just did is I created a pretend device and you can see that it was dropped into Amazon's voice assistant right away. Again, that's because I have an integration between Samsung SmartThings in my linked services here. I have already linked Amazon's voice assistant. 
If you haven't done that already, here is where it is. It's sitting in that menu page. You'll hit the voice assistant and then you'll pick the one that you wanna to connect to. But Amazon's the only one that this is going to work with, this little workaround that I'm going to give you to get it working in Samsung SmartThings. So here it is, it's sitting there. It still says motion detected, but it may or may not be uh, detected at this point. Now, what we're going to do is create a new automation in the automation screen. So if our device status switch motion to, and if it's on, I'm gonna hit save. Now I've gotta pick what you wanna do with this. It's, it's up to you how you want to control your home. So let's say we wanted to turn on a light that's in the garage. We'll wanna turn on both of our garage entry lights. So I've just gotta pick those. I'm just saying turn on. And if I'd like, I could do an auto turn off as well, but I'm gonna do that with a reverse automation here. So if this motion gets turned on, or if this virtual switch gets turned on, then I'm gonna turn on my garage entry lights. And I'm going to create the exact reverse. So I'm gonna create another automation and I'm going to pick that switch motion two, and when it gets turned off, and in this case, I'm going to stay, it stays that status for a minute. So I wanna make sure that that motion sensor no longer has anyone in the room, and I don't want the lights flickering constantly. So now we're gonna control devices again, and we're gonna pick both of those lights, and in this case, we'll be turning both of them off. Now, what we need to do is in the Amazon app, we have to get things connected to that switch motion to that virtual device. So what you have to do is go into more and go into routines, and we're going to create a new pair of routines. So I'm going to hit the plus, and when this happens, now what I have to do here is choose the right motion sensor. Uh, now, here's the problem. This is the problem you're gonna run into. Which one is SmartThings and which one is the direct integration between SwitchBot and uh, Amazon's voice assistant? You don't actually know right now. So what you have to do is you have to go to your list of devices and there should be something up at the top that says you have some new devices. Now, as you go into this, you should see that SwitchBot motion. Here it is, and you're gonna see both of them. Now when I tap on one of those devices, see how it said waiting for smart things? This is the one that I need to change the name of. So I'm gonna change it to SwitchBot Motion 222 because we know this one from smart things will never actually get updated. So now what I have in my list of devices is this SwitchBot Motion 22222, and I just know that now I don't pick that one. So I'm going to go back into my routines, and then we're gonna create a new routine. When this happens, we're gonna choose Smart Home, and now we're gonna scroll down to the bottom, and now I know that this one is directly connected between the SwitchBot service and the Miss A service. So I'm going to hit that, and whenever motion is detected, and I'm gonna hit next, my action is that I will go back into Smart Home and all devices, and now I have to find that switch motion to virtual switch that we created. So here's that, and what I'm going to do is turn that on. So I'll hit next, and now what I've done is in Miss A, I've detected the motion and I'm passing that back to SmartThings by way of that virtual switch. Now you just have to create the opposite, which I'm going to do here quickly. So here's my new routine. When SwitchBot Motion 2 detects no motion, I'll turn off that uh, Switch Motion 2 virtual switch. So I have both of those going on and now we're ready to test this. Okay, so what just happened, you can see this, I set up notifications for motion detection and no motion detection in both the SmartThings and the Miss A application. And you can see they came up right at the same time. Now I'll just wait a minute. So there you go. 
this is how you can coordinate those and you can see there <laughs> it's it's totally working so you can see that this is totally working and it seems like this will be fairly reliable for you guys. Now, other than that, in general, people who are using the Miss A application, obviously you're going to be able to use the motion sensor in routines. These are the two triggers that you will be getting inside of Miss A. If you'd like to see how the other SwitchBot products perform though, here's our long-term ownership review of these smart home products from SwitchBot. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, don't hate, automate.